Greetings, greetings in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus once again. Such a great honor and privilege of mine to be coming into your homes. Oh my God, you know, just giving thanks, praise the Lord. You know, so many of us, praise God, we have to really, 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 really give God thanks for sparing our lives. Praise God, glory be to God. When we look around and see how many persons in neighboring islands and countries have been affected and impacted even by the you know recent hurricane you know at this time hurricane burial at this time and you know to see um that um there's still many of us that can see we give god thanks for sparing our lives but you know it's not always going to be like that there's a lot of folks that take the grace and the mercy of god for granted and believe that um you know some of us you know, that we, we believe that we deserve to be spared and we deserve to not be impacted by disaster. But I want to encourage you to learn to appreciate God in sincerity. You know, so many people are being getting prepared um, when there's a hurricane coming or there's some sort of announcement for disaster. But very few, including men in the church, in the local churches, you know, is really prepared to meet, you know, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope that you are one of them that is prepared. I'm going to be sharing a wonderful word with you. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, I might minister, you know, at church or, you know, in our Rima studies or whatever. And the Holy Spirit would just come to me and say, I want you to to really, really get deep into this word that I've given you, that I've imparted onto you. And I believe that I want to share this word on a slower pace because, you know, sometimes we're ministering and we're going through and there's still a lot more people that needs to hear what God is saying in this hour. You know, I can tell you that we're living in some perilous times. We are living in some evilest times, you know, when we look and see even recently what happened um, to the former president of the United States, uh, President Donald Trump. You know, I'm not here advocating for anything, but it just goes to show the mindset and the evilness of people. You know, it just goes to show when the word of God lets us know that the heart of man is desperately wicked you know, even in our local settings and surroundings. And, you know, we can see the evil and the wickedness that is um, spread like wildfire. And it behooves us to be prayerful. It behooves us to be ready. It behooves us to continue to look up for our Redeemer draweth nigh. And guess what? He's coming like a thief in the night. Notice I didn't say he's a thief, but he's coming like a thief in the night. Stay tuned. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, my friend. And uh, when I say that he is coming, Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. I want to talk about a thief. <laughs> I want to talk about a thief. And the way that I want to talk about a thief is uh, seasoned. Um, you know, when you, when you learn how to seize uh, the moment, you know, we want to look at the power of the moment. Uh, the power of the moment. And I want it to soak in. And I want you to listen. Uh, yeah, I want you to listen. Praise God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, as I was sharing the other day, the thief has been mentioned by every preacher. You know, there are so many persons that have heard about the thief on the cross. And anyone who have ever said anything on or preached anything um, from the Bible would have known or read about the thief. 
Now, I, 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 as I said before, I, I can't sit here and tell you that I know anything about the man. I can't tell you that I know about the crimes he committed. Um, I can't tell you that I know all of the sins and all those things. But what I do know is this man represents something powerful. You hear me? The thief on the cross represents something powerful. And no wonder the coming of the Lord Jesus, you know, is, um, you know, is, 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 is looked upon like when he appears, it will be so sudden, you know, he, um, he will appear like a thief in the night. And, and, and I, I, I just want to open up the word on a different level. I want us to get deep in the word as it pertains to the thief on the cross. And you can find that, you can find that in um, Luke 23, 39 to 43. Let us go there. Let us go there. In Luke 23, one of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saying, saving yourself and us too. You know, in other words, he's saying, while you're saving yourself, save us since you're the Messiah. But the other criminal protested. The other criminal, you know, said, don't you fear God? Even when you have been sentenced to die? Hmm. In 41 of Luke 23, the other criminal is saying, he's saying to this guy, we deserve to die for our crimes. But this man has done, has not done anything wrong. 42. Then he said, this is the guy now that is, that, 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 that is speaking to the other one who was mocking Jesus on the cross. He turned to Jesus and he said, Jesus, remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. I want you to remember that because that was powerful when I ministered this word at church. It was so powerful. I want you to focus on what this guy said. After he, you have to say, rebuked the other criminal. This guy said, Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom yeah powerful and watch this jesus replied i assure you today you will be with me in paradise in paradise now i want you to look at that because i know over the years it, it has been preached it has been preached, but I want you to look at this revelation. Look, look, look at that. In a split second, this guy recognized the power of the moment. And he decided, I'm going to seize this opportunity. I might never get another chance. Hmm? I might never get another chance to... to to, to, to do something like this. You understand? Oh my God. Here we see. His testimony is not. He didn't turn to Jesus and said. Lord rem Jesus remember. How much work I did in the church. He didn't say Jesus remember. How much I've given to your work. To spread the gospel. He didn't say Jesus remember the good that I've done. Remember all the people that are forgiven. He didn't. He didn't um, come with anything like that because he know he knew that he was there to be crucified next to Jesus. He acknowledged his sins. He acknowledged his faults, his failures. He knew that he needed a savior at that moment. Now I can't tell you what he was thinking all along while he was doing what he was doing. But, 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 but the word here that I'm bringing to you, oh glory be to God, is that you must understand the power of the moment. Even right now, I'm coming with this word. There are some of you that is listening to me that have unsaved children, unsaved spouses, unsaved family members, unsaved co-workers, unsaved friends. And you... 
have never really taken the time to witness to them why not seize this opportunity to even send them this video let somebody else share the word with them because there is something called the power of the moment like i said he, he was on the cross you know professing his righteousness neither was he there making up excuses because of, of, of saying you know lord you know why i didn't go to church or why i didn't go to that church or why i left that church is because of all the hypocrites that's there and the this and the that and blaming everyone else for his mess and his doings and his actions he didn't do that he didn't find any excuses he wasn't looking to be looked upon and to be justified for his crimes and all the things that he did he acknowledged that he was a sinner he acknowledged that he needed help he acknowledged that he that that, that if he don't seize this opportunity that he's going to be in deep trouble no doubt he probably heard even though he might not have met jesus before he probably heard about him and he probably heard also that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun he also probably heard about the lake of fire and so here he was saying to himself this is the man that can help me this is the one that can help me you know what i admired about this guy he knows that he's he, that, he, that he's a thief he knows there's a heaven and a hell he knows that he has to make the right choice hmm? before it is too late my god you see a thief understands something that many people don't understand a thief understands the power of the moment and there are many today even in our churches that don't understand the power of the moment they don't understand the power of the moment when it even comes to giving god their best praise you know praising god in spirit and in truth worshiping him in spirit and in truth they don't understand the power of the moment they don't understand that there's a lot of things that is locked up in their praise there's a lot of blessings there's a lot of breakthroughs that is locked up in them by not opening by locked up for them by not opening their mouth and giving god praise there's a lot of people don't know the power of the moment mm a thief waits for the right moment to make his move huh and and i want you to think about this word that i'm bringing it's you know get this revelation that that when the word of god lets us know that, that he's coming like a thief in the night he's coming like a thief because there is a moment when when majority will be least expecting jesus to put in his appearance he's coming like a thief he's not a thief he's coming like one and as i studied and as i pondered the thief on the cross beside jesus there is something that opened up to me now praise god glory be to god hallelujah a thief knows when to make that move when nobody else is paying attention when people have left their valuables unattended and unwatched you understand the moment when other people are sleeping and restless huh? when others are gallivanting and laughing and jeering and doing all those things that's the moment brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen that the thief has been waiting for the moment to take what he did not really really work for and what others will say he don't deserve and didn't deserve uh, the thief on the cross for some reason seemed to frustrate a lot of people i wonder if i can preach in here right now oh glory be to god hallelujah mm. i pray right now in the name of jesus that your eyes i pray that your eyes are being opened the veil is coming off of your eyes right now glory be to god and i want you to listen because so many of you are already saying oh my god all these years 
I've been hearing the message preached. I've never heard it like this. Maybe some of you are saying I've been preaching this message for so long and I've really never gotten the revelation like this. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Praise God. People is always saying, well, well you know, um, you, you know, well, what about the thief on the cross? You know, um, notice, notice the thief on the cross. Jesus didn't say to him before I can remember you. I, I, I want you to know that you need to ask them if they would take you off the cross and you need to go and get water baptized first. You need to go get water baptized first. You want to say Jesus didn't say that. I want you to pay attention, guys, because sometimes we are so busy arguing and fussing over baptismal formulas that we miss the revelation of the power of God and the power of the moment, the power of the moment. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I just want you to know that baptism is a part of of the commandments it's a part not the great commandment not the ten commandment but it's a part and once you are born again and you once you are born again and you're saved you know that you have repented you should be water baptized but i just want to open your eyes that, that the time we take and waste judging even persons that have already been baptized we are missing the power of the moment we are missing the power for unity we are missing the power of showing brothers and sisters love the love of God we are missing the power of showing the world that we are praise God we are his children praise the Lord glory be to God hallelujah what is God saying in this hour Praise God. Notice this guy. He didn't attend church every Sunday. He wasn't singing on the choir, teaching, learning zone. Some of you might call it Sunday school. He wasn't preaching the word. He wasn't no holier than thou. You know, nobody knew him all, all, as no good God-fearing person. He was a thief. He stole, he robbed but look at it he knew what it was to seize the power of the moment to seize the opportunity when it presented itself to him some of you listen to me you are sinners this is an opportunity this is a moment some of you are backsliders and you're finding all sorts of excuse to not go to church and not serve the lord but I want you to think about the thief on the cross. None of us don't care how intellectual and how, how anointed and how, how you know powerful we think we are. Not one of us can explain the whole situation about the thief on the cross. The man never met Jesus before. Except this incredible brief moment where he's about to be crucified. For his crimes, for his sins, next to Jesus. He's hanging there. They have been beating him also. He is wounded also. He's suffering also. You understand? This man, this thief, was paying for his deeds. And honestly, he knew that he was going to die. But I want you to not underestimate the thief. Because the thief knows something that many of you that is listening to me right now don't know. The thief knows the power of the moment. He knows time is running out for him. He knows that if you're going to see something, you're going to have to do it in the moment that the owner least expects. Oh my God. Had it not been for that moment, oh glory to God. He would not have made it to paradise with Jesus. Oh, praise God. Remember, he was a thief, a sinner. But there he is. Be, and there he is being crucified next to Jesus. But the good thing about it is he acknowledged. The problem we have today 
is everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. And I'm not just talking about the physical death. Nobody wants to die to to, 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 to the old ways, to the Adamic nature. Nobody wants to kill anything. People want to live how they want to live, do what they want to do, when they want to do it, where they want to do it, with who they want to do it with. And they don't understand. But this guy, he, 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 he understood, uh, praise God, the power of, of the moment. And you know what? Jesus wasn't caught off guard because Jesus knew that the guy was going to ask him that. He knew and so he was ready. He saw, his, he saw him there and he knew exactly what he was thinking. We have to be careful, brothers and sisters. Oh, my God. Because while we are pointing fingers at the thief or, you know, who got caught, remember, God also knows about us. While you're pointing your fingers and on somebody else and who is saved and who is not saved and who is going to make it to heaven and who going to hell based on your, based on your standards, based on what you say. Oh, be careful. Be very careful. I learned a lot as I was preparing this word. My eyes was open to a lot of things in the spirit realm. You understand? None of us, none of us, none of us is perfect. But it's a different thing when we can acknowledge. When we can acknowledge that we need a savior. All of us need. All of us need Jesus. And not just when we go to the altar and we bawl and we cry and we are convicted and we surrender our lives to the Lord and we get baptized and we are in the church and we are working for the Lord and all of these. We need him every day. We need Jesus every day. Praise God. That guy realized that he needed a savior. He needed salvation. He needed someone who could save him. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, no wonder the songwriter, no wonder the songwriter say, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour. Yeah, I need thee. Yeah, you know the rest of the song. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, and that's what the cross is all about. The cross is all about somebody needing him. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. You see, it wasn't just any old blood being shed on the cross. It was the precious blood of the spotless Lamb of God, Almighty God. Salvation wasn't cheap, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Salvation is still not cheap. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Salvation is still the most valuable thing known to mankind. Yet man do not want it even when it's free. Oh, glory be to God. Here it is. You have an opportunity to go to heaven. Even after stealing. Even after lying. Even after being envious and jealous of others. Even after hating your brothers and your sisters. Even after killing. Here it is. You know, you have an opportunity. Even after messing up and living the way that you are living even right now. You have an amazing opportunity. Like that thief on the cross, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. After all that is said and done, he still, Jesus still offers us the free gift of salvation. There is something that I appreciate about the thief on the cross. You see, a thief only wants to come after something that is valuable. No wonder the word of God lets us know, praise God, that the thief comes to steal kill and destroy the first thing he wants to do is steal a thief is bent on stealing from you a thief will come and steal your joy steal your praise steal your happiness steal your love for one another steal your desire for god and the things of god and the house of god that's what a thief does he goes after something that is valuable He's not going to go after anything that has no value. Your salvation is valuable. Praise God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And when you value something, when you put a value on something like a thief does, 
You're going to protect it. You're going to guard it. Talk to me, somebody. You're going to keep it where no thief can come and steal it. You're going to keep it in your possession. Oh, glory be to God. I told you my eyes was open to a lot of things after studying more about the thief on the cross. Here it is that this guy is saying to himself, I've been waiting for this moment. I've been waiting for this hour. Praise God. I know that I've made a lot of bad decisions in life. I know that everybody has looked down and me and everybody know what I've done and what I've been doing. Oh, there were times that I was making fun of, 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 of people, you know, and, and what they were doing while I was there busy stealing and robbing. This guy recognizes the most defining moment of his life. What about you, my friend? He sees the value of what Jesus is doing on the cross. He knows the power of the moment. And before the power of that moment, he would have been lost forever. Listen to this preacher. He would have been lost forever. What about you, my friend? Right now, there is an opportunity for you. Right now, there is an opportunity for you to surrender your life to the man called Jesus right there in that bedroom, right behind those prison bars, right there in the hospital bed, in the hospital room, right there on the job, in the taxi, at the airport, right there at that saloon, barber shop, mechanic shop, wherever you are, supermarket, under the sound of my voice, young or old, baby, mother, baby, father, you have an opportunity. But will you seize the moment? Will you seize the power of the moment? Oh, praise God. You see, there are defining moments when we must all decide between our past and our future. Or what is and what could be. Praise God. Doing and saying, brothers and sisters, doing and saying the right thing at the right time will determine your destiny. Oh my God, look at this guy. He just turns around and says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. There was no long prayer. He wasn't pleading anything. He was not there, you know, pouring out and, 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 and bawling down the place and and trying to kick in all those things. No. He acknowledged that he needed a savior. He acknowledged that he was a sinner. And he was going to hell. He knew his destination. And he decided. I have someone right beside me. That can save me. Mm. He said Jesus. Remember me. When you go into your kingdom. And look at Jesus. Jesus didn't ignore him. Jesus didn't bring up his past. Jesus didn't say after all the people that you rob, are you going to, what you going to do, what do you expect me to do? He didn't do that. He just looked at that guy and I can just imagine Jesus just smiling. Both of them had the same opportunity while the other guys there mocking and jeering and, and, and joining in with those soldiers who is piercing him and who is in all those who is shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Here is this guy, you know, saying, Jesus, remember me. Eh? What about you? Will you ask him to remember you right now? Will you ask him to forgive you right now? I'm telling you, he remains to be the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He has not changed. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. This is the day of salvation. Choose you today. Choose you right now. Choose you this day who you will serve. Joshua 24, 15. You have a choice. There's a moment in front of you. Will you seize this opportunity to give your heart to the Lord? Will you seize this opportunity to ask God to forgive you for hating your brothers and your sisters? Will you seize this opportunity to really pour out and say, Father God, I ask you to help me and to forgive me for the times that I've pointed my fingers on another brother or another sister just because of my standards, just because of, 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 of my self-righteousness. Will you say, Jesus, remember me? Oh, praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. If you have not subscribed as yet to my channel on YouTube, I want to ask you now, do it now. Subscribe and hit all. There's a little bell. Just hit the little bell and you'll see all. Tap it. It's free. You know, there's no charge for it. Just subscribe. Oh, praise God and share. Glory be to God. Be a witness. Seize this moment. Seize the power of this moment. Mm, hallelujah. You see, this moment could change your life. Remember, Jesus had to die first. Jesus had to die before the thief. Why? Because he had to purchase the thief's salvation. They could not kill either one of them. They both have had an opportunity. And so, like many of us, everybody, everybody else, including family members, may have written him off. May have written you off. Well, I know so many of them has written me off. Still write me off. But I thank God for the day that I said, Jesus, remember me. Forgive me. I come before you. I ask you to save me. That's all. With a, with a pure heart, with a penitent heart, a sorrowful heart, a regretful heart. Oh, praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Mm. The thief knew something that many of us don't know. He knew that he had to make things right with Jesus while he had the chance. Oh, praise God. He knew, praise God, that time was running out and the clock was ticking. Oh, praise God. I want you to know, praise God, he knew the value of the blood of Jesus. He knew the value. No wonder the songwriter said, oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. I can tell you. I can tell you about the blood. Oh, praise the Lord. Glory be to God. I say, sir, lady, sinners, backsliders, what are you going to do with this moment? What are you going to do with this word that the Lord is speaking to you about right now? Praise God. Are you going to keep on wasting every moment you get, every opportunity you get to get saved? To return back to the Lord. To serve the Lord in spirit and in truth. Not just going to church. Not just working your heart out. Not just working, working, working to be seen. To be seen. But you, 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 what you're doing, you're doing it from your heart, from your soul, from your mind, for, for the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Knowing all that he has done for you and you could never repay him. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. This opportunity, this is an opportunity for you to hear. This opportunity has been given to you. And this is an opportunity for you to listen, for you to hear what the word is saying to you, what God is saying to you, praise God. It is all about the cross. It is all about the cross. It is all about salvation, the free gift of salvation. You see, when you look back at it, praise God, everyone, everyone is a sinner. Everyone was born in sin and shape and iniquity. Oh, praise the Lord. For we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3. 23. I don't care if you don't smoke, you don't drink, you've never been to a movie, a theater, you've never been to a bar, you've never gone to a dance, you never done all those things, you've never committed adultery, you never committed fornication, you never lie, you never stole. Well, so you say, um, you never been bad man, you never been covetous, you never, oh, you you just feel that you're this, you know, God sent, dropped out of the sky, perfect individual lie, lie. Lie because of one man caused, called Adam. Sin entered the world. And we were all born into sin. And because of one man, the man called Jesus, we can all be forgiven. 
our sins. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you open your heart? Will you open up and let him in? Right now, even as I'm speaking, some of you, he's dealing with you through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is dealing with you. You're going to church, you're singing on the choir, but yet you don't speak to sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. As you leave church, you slaughter your brothers, you slaughter your sisters, you slaughter the bishop, you slaughter the pastor, you slaughter the, the deacon and, and the deaconess, and you slaughter the, 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 this one and that one. Come on, he's dealing with you right now. He's dealing with you. Yes, my friend. You have the opportunity to give your heart to the Lord. You have the opportunity right now to repent of your sins. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You see, God loved us all so much that he gave his only begotten son to die in our state. Praise God. But God commended his love toward us in that while I can say I was one of them. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5, 8. That's what I'm talking about. The thief on the cross is a reminder that if we could just come to God clean, acknowledge that we're a sinner, acknowledge we need a Savior, acknowledge that, that we can't make it to heaven without Him forgiving us of our sins. Acknowledge that without a Savior, you're going straight to a burning hell acknowledge it brothers and sisters ladies and gentlemen it's time that you tell someone the truth oh i know that we have all of these groups we have all of these groups and we have government leaders all over the world that is that is in that is you know condoning all of these things and is afraid including many christians and they're afraid to to identify with the man called jesus they're afraid to stand up for what they believe. All because of the almighty, as they would say, dollar. Oh my God. They're afraid to say, this is what I stand for. This is my core values. Whether you like it or don't like it. Come on. This is what I stand for. I believe, praise God. Hallelujah. There is a heaven and there is a hell. I believe that there is only one way to the Father, and that is through the man called Jesus. For he declared and said, I am the way, the only way. I am the way, the truth. I am the truth, the only truth, the full truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other life that will give you eternal life but through me. Oh, praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I know that many of you, if you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, you should be commenting left, right, and center. So many persons, you know, that you send them anything on WhatsApp, you send them something on TikTok, you send them, you send them some idleness. And there's they're commenting left, right, and center on Facebook and you know on Instagram and all of these things, but you put out a word that God has sent to them for the hour and they draw back and start hiding. They don't want nobody to know that they're a Christian. They don't want no, they don't want to identify with the power of the moment. They don't want no one to know they're saved. They're ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you one of them? As I point my finger, are you one of them that is ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Or will you stand boldly and decree and declare that I am a child of God? And I am glad that I seized the opportunity when it was presented to me. Like the man on the cross, like the thief on the cross, I turned and I say, Father God, I said, oh Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Here I, here, here I am, here I am. I know I'm a sinner. I know I need thee. I know I cannot make it without you. Are you one of them that is not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Oh, praise God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, my friend, praise God. The blood of Jesus still speaks. The blood of Jesus is still speaking. What are you going to do with this moment? 
What are you going to do with this opportunity? What are you going to do with this word? Are you going to share this word? Are you going to be a witness to someone? Oh, you might not be able to say it. You might not be able to bring it out like I am bringing it out and others are bringing it out. But you can use the tools that God has put in your hands. Like the thief on the cross. Are you willing to ask for help, backslider? Are you willing to ask for help, cinnamon? Jesus, are you willing to say, Jesus, remember me today. Forgive me today. Help me to understand the power of this moment and what you want me to do for you. Here are my Lord. If you can use anyone, if you want to send anyone, use me, send me. Father God, will you come to Jesus right now? His arms is stretched out. He's saying, come. Like the thief on the cross, come, just as you are. Come, I am here, and you too can be with me in paradise this moment, today. I want to say, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and dwelling Savior, I want to say welcome, welcome to the family of God. If you, had, if you have returned back home as a backslider, you have been touched by this word. Please testify. Send your testimony. Praise God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah.